welcome to one of my other Lightroom video courses. And this one is another quick video looking at using the graduated filters in Lightroom 5. So just to get started, this is one of my images from uh, last week. And I used uh, filters to get the shot that I wanted. But, you know, there's once you get into editing, there's you want to be able to tweak the file a little bit more, get it the way that you saw it when you took the shot. So the first thing I'm going to go to is actually the basic module. And where this takes me is what I can see is where I can push the file. So this is um, round about how it originally looked. Um, it was a, a underexposed a little bit to get a bit more detail out of the sky. But what you can do is, before you start using the graduated filter, if you go to the exposure slider here, you can then have a look at the file and see where, how far you can push it before it breaks. Now what you can do is, what I tend to do is, I will go to the left and see how dark it gets and you can see there's a little bit of highlight where the sun sets, but it's not bad, it's actually, it's, um, you know, it's, it's exactly what sort of human eye would see anyway. You know, it'd be so bright. So it's not too bad, but what I'm also looking for is the foreground as well. Now I was using the, excuse me, I was using the Canon 5D Mark III. So the, the dynamic range on that camera is really good. So if I pull the exposure slider to somewhere, what I'll tend to do is expose the image in Lightroom, um, mainly the foreground. So I'll get the foreground to the exposure value that I want it to and then from there I'll add the graduated filter to bring the sky back because I know from looking at the file that I can do that. So looking at that now I'm actually quite happy with that, it's nice even exposure on the ground. So once I'm happy with that I'll go straight to the graduated filter which is just up here and click that. Now, in here you've got your effects of which one you, you, you do in that. I just leave it on custom, which usually just leaves everything blank. And then I add the graduated filter. Now you can see here that it's, I've already added it. It's just here. So what I'll do is I'll reset it, which will actually put it back to its um, original. So really that's how the image looks without the graduated filter. But you, you look at that image and think, wow, this, can you pull that back? And yes, you can. So what you do is, again, I'm in the graduated filter section here. I've left everything on zero. And I'm just going to click on the screen and then slowly bring it, bring it down to round about there. So I'll have it to feather out quite a bit. And the first thing I'll look at is the exposure slider. So I'll just slowly bring that down. You don't want to do it too much. You want to try and get it the way you had, you envisioned, envis yeah. how you saw it there that evening. So I'm saying around about, what I'm looking at, I'm not looking at this area here, I'm looking at the outline in the clouds, because what happens is people go it's too far and they end up making the blue way too dark. And usually at this time of sunset, the blue is actually quite bright it's a bit bleached out so I'm happy with that so then to work on this area here I'll look at the highlights so if I start bringing the highlights down a bit there we go so bring the highlights down and just up the exposure just a little bit to get it back to how it was and it's already evening out the exposure to how I saw it that evening so also to just bring the clouds out going to just add a little bit of clarity you know I did remember that just before this shoot it was raining and these clouds were heading away from me and if you can see over here where you're looking at the Isle of Arran uh, these clouds are all storm clouds and for a point I was worrying that these were going to start heading towards us and completely ruin the evening but luckily they stayed away so uh, they were quite dark clouds so if I just up the, up the clarity, it kind of just brings them back a bit the way that I remember. And also the contrast will do the same thing as well. 
So even if you had a little bit of contrast, it just brings those clouds out a little bit more, but I'm gonna put that back. Quick little tip, if you double click on the actual text, it actually sends, it, sends the slider straight back to zero. It's quite a little handy tip. So looking at the image, it's actually looking quite good. Um, you can mess around the shadows as well because there will be shadow detail. And the good thing about shadows is when you're using the graduated filter on this, when you lower it down and it goes below the horizon, it'll end up darkening parts of the shot you don't want. So this area here, the trees, it'll end up darkening it and you don't want that. So I've always known that the shadows always brings that back. It just pulls that back a bit to where you want it. You can see there when I just clicked it, it just brought it back. So it, it makes the transition more even. So I'm just gonna go back. I'm just gonna actually just add a little bit more exposure down. Aye, about there, about there, I like that. And that's basically it, the graduated filter, you know, and there's other ways you can do it as well, where if you expose for the sky, you can use a graduated filter on the foreground and bring that back with the shadows. But the, the downside with that is noise um, becomes a, a bigger issue on your images. So it's not something I'd recommend. Uh, it's better to use filters and then go into the file afterwards and then you can develop it properly. If I had done this as just a normal exposure, the sky would have been so wiped out that I wouldn't have been able to pull it back as much. So I was using a filter to get me get me the image I want. And that's all there is to it. There's another good tip video I've just done for you. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Make sure to check out my others. Thanks for watching.